Hey y'all, I wanted to make this video um, as a kind of, uh, not so much tutorial, more so showcase uh, of my cruise control system that I made for my 1983 Olds 98 Regency. Um, this can be, you know, come, come in handy for uh, some of you who have these cars, um, these early 80s through the mid 80s uh, and if you drive a station wagon into the late 80s, uh, GM cars with the computer command control electronic carburetor system. Um, and you want to delete your computer system, but you want to keep cruise control. Uh, you can't do that with a stock cruise control on these. Um, if you delete the computer, the cruise control operates off of uh, pinouts that go into the computer unless you want to do a whole bunch of wiring. Um, you can't save your cruise control with the, without the computer. You have to uh, buy an aftermarket kit and, and deal with that whole mess. So after months of brainstorming and studying vacuum diagrams and a lot of research into cruise control, early cruise control, like the 60s and 70s, I uh, came up with a way of making cruise control work uh, for pretty much any car with uh, cable throttle, so not electronic throttle, but if you say want a cruise control on like an early 2000s car that didn't come with it, uh, this will uh, work for you as well. Um, you just have to have a vacuum source and uh, a couple of other things. This car actually worked out really conveniently uh, for me to do this because of the way that uh, my climate control was set up. I didn't actually have to do any drilling or cutting. It was all just plug and play and it really only took like about an hour to install or less um, if you don't count the actual dialing in process which took a really long time. But without further ado, let me show you what I got here. So from just inside the car, this switch is the original cruise control switch. This doesn't do anything anymore. This goes off for the computer. Um, and you know, originally be on, set, and, and accelerate, but it's useless now, so it's not even hooked up. I just have it turned off for no reason. Um, but if you look underneath here, I've got that nice little valve from the plumbing section at Lowe's, um, which I plan to put a 3D printed thing on here that says cruise control, but um, I need to get a hold of one of my buddies who has a 3d printer and actually figure out how we can do that but uh that aside if you look here you can see i got a vacuum line hooked up on that side going up it behind the dash there and a vacuum line right here going up behind the dash there what this one's coming from is a signal vacuum uh that would work with my automatic climate control, which has also been deleted because it didn't work correctly. So when you delete your controller for automatic climate control, you have one vacuum line that goes directly through the firewall and into your manifold vacuum source behind the carburetor. That line is a one one. It's a quarter inch uh, vacuum hose. Put it. Put a. Uh, you know, I guess they call it L connector, but technically it's an I into that vacuum uh, line put another line onto it, run it all the way down across this duct for your uh, heater. Um, I also have a number of aftermarket wires for various switches and, and such that I've installed on this car, which is why it zip ties there. But you run it all along this thing up in, you know, behind the dash, uh, hook up to a valve, which is just an on-off valve, and then this vacuum line goes to the vacuum release switch for the original cruise control. Um, basically hit the brake and it creates a, uh, a vacuum leak and all of your vacuum is gone so your cruise control disengages. I just teed into that and put this into here uh, for that. I also put a uh, vacuum check valve uh, in between here and the, uh, the brake pedal so that I don't lose any vacuum uh, on the way back out. Once vacuum is, is uh, supplied to it, um, it can't go anywhere unless I uh, hit the brake. So from there, I can't show you because I can't really see it, but from there, I've got a vacuum line that goes through the firewall, which was original to the car. It just came off of the brake pedal thing, through the firewall, and, oops. Sorry about that, guys. I had to deal with something. We're having a party uh, this weekend, and I got to, we had to move a bunch of stuff around. Anyway, where was I here? So this, this here line with a yellow stripe on it, that comes out of the firewall. Come, it used to go straight to the brake pedal for the uh, vacuum brake release. Now it's got a uh, splice into it, 
which goes into this line right here. It's the same size. I forget what it is. I think it's 15, uh, 5 16 Um, Run that along here into the factory uh, cruise control servo. Um, this came on the car, and originally this line would have just gone into here. Um, and then out of this hole here would have been a uh, vacuum line that went over to a little uh, extra doodad thing that would, would have mounted up right here. And then off that would have come off a line that goes into that and a line that went into this, uh, which would go to your brake release. But I have bypassed this whole thing since this relies on the computer um, to just the vacuum uh, coming out of the firewall straight to this which is attached directly to our throttle uh, plate down there. So basically how this works is there's a little vacuum um, source back in there uh, that was originally for the climate control, automatic climate control uh, so, uh, vacuum source, or signal vacuum I guess they call it. That goes into the firewall through there, through the firewall back behind the glove box. I spliced it goes under the dash into my switch behind the dash here or on my valve um, over by the dash here and that vacuum would then travels up through that uh, brake release through the firewall again and back around directly into this servo and it is entirely analog there is no computer involved um, the only thing that you really have to do to set this is dial this in here you see this uh, rod right here is a bunch of holes in it and a cotter pin and basically that's your adjustment you want to adjust this so basically when this servo actuates this thing right here gets sucked up like that um and holds it in place you want to adjust this this cotter pin here that that uh acts as a as a uh, a stopper a foot for this bracket to come up and pull it up you want to make it so when this thing is fully bottomed out, when it's on full vacuum, it's only three inch pounds, okay? And it still pulls, it manages to pull the entire throttle plate uh, while the engine is under load, only three inch pounds. Isn't that amazing? Anyway, you want to make sure that when this is fully bottomed out, this thing just stays in place. You don't want it to pull on this because if it does that, that means that your cruise control is going to set and continue to slowly accelerate um, as your cruise is set. You don't want that to happen. You also don't want it set too far out because if it's too far out, this will be fully bottomed out and it won't hold the throttle in place to wherever your foot was. It'll hold the throttle in place to wherever it is when it bottoms out. For me, it was 50 miles an hour. So my cruise would only work at 50 miles an hour or lower. So you have to sort of go out on the road. It took me about two hours drive it for a mile, set your cruise, see what happens, pull over, turn it off, open the hood, take this pin out, reset it, maybe one hole down more, drive it again, do the same thing, rinse and repeat over and over and over again until uh, it's set to the point where it will set and hold wherever the throttle is without accelerating or decelerating any. It's a little bit tedious, but I'm pretty happy with this how this turned out here and the fact that uh, it didn't take that long to actually install once I figured out how I was going to do it. Um, and probably the best part, all this stuff, since I already had the factory servo and the, uh, and the source vacuum through the firewall, only cost me about 25 bucks. The most expensive part being the uh, valve because it's made of copper. Um, if you bought an aluminum one, you could probably get it for even cheaper, but it was about $9 for the valve and, uh, you know, a couple bucks for each foot of the vacuum line that I got. And I only got three feet of this stuff and five feet of the small stuff. Um, $25, perfectly functioning cruise control system, provided that you kept your factory cruise control servo, um, and you, uh, are able to tap into your firewall in a, an easy spot, you... It shouldn't take you very long, and it won't cost you hardly anything. You can do this for under $100 versus the cruise control, aftermarket cruise control kits you can buy for like 300 bucks. They come with this big rat's nest of wiring. You got to stuff under a seat or behind the glove box somewhere. They got all these little wires that aren't labeled, and, and you have to figure out how to wire the thing up and make it look like it's supposed to be there. Oftentimes, they're these tacky plastic switches that stick onto the bottom of the column makes it look like a, some kind of Japanese import. Um, this is entirely analog, took less than an hour to install, 
a little longer than it should have taken to adjust only cost $25 and if you if I really took the effort you know really took uh, the time and effort to figure out sorry about this um, to figure out how to make that a little more hidden so it was kind of out of the way it wouldn't look like anything aftermarket was done to this car so that is my solution for uh, cruise control on a GM computer command control car that no longer has a computer or I guess any car that doesn't have cruise control that you would like to add cruise control there you go it, it's gonna work pretty much the same way regardless of whatever vehicle you have um, the only disclaimer I've got to say is that since this is a what they call undampered system you're gonna be going up a hill and it's holding the accelerator in the same spot that your foot was at so what happens when you're driving without cruise and you have your foot at the same spot going up a hill? You're going to lose speed, so you got to push on the accelerator a little bit to maintain the speed you want. Same with it going downhill. When you're going downhill and you're hitting the gas, you need to let off the gas or hit the brakes to prevent you from accelerating. This isn't going to do that for you because it's just a vacuum. It's There's no uh, computer controlling it or regulating it. So you're going to slow down going uphill and you're going to speed up going downhill and it will all eventually even out because if you're, if you're eventually on flat ground again, then it's going to be uh, going the same speed that you set it at. But if you're on a really hilly road, you might have to put your foot on it and help it along a little bit when you're going up a steep hill. Or maybe when you're going downhill, you might have to hit the brakes a little bit um, to make sure that it uh, doesn't exceed the speed limit. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. It's pretty simple. It takes probably the same amount of time that it took me to explain it in this video so by the time you watch this take that time you know and multiply it by two provided you have all the stuff you can get this done in a day so there you go i made the video so you guys don't have to figure it out on your own and uh hopefully i made somebody you know hopefully i was able to help somebody hopefully i made someone laugh anything like that but uh I'm pretty sure I'm probably one of the only people to have done something like this, and it works very flawlessly too. It works about the same as, as the cruise control on that green car there works, which doesn't work anymore at all, but when I got the car, it did work, and it worked about like this. Anyway, I've been talking long enough. This video's going on 13 minutes. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.